Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are going over every single Monster UI component. In today's video, we have a pretty short one. It is the button group component. And if you missed the button component, make sure you check out my last video where I talk all about the button. It's sort of required to know this, but it's not too complex. And if you find value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps a lot with the algorithm. And make sure you subscribe and maybe hit the bell notification if you want to learn more about React and Matil UI. Anyways, the button group is essentially just a container component for a group of buttons to sort of style them together together in this sort of manner. So you can see over here, I have three buttons, each with the labels one, two, and three. And all they've done here is they've wrapped them in the button group um, component. And with the button group component, you can go ahead and say which variant you want all the buttons to be. Essentially, all the buttons within the group will be the same variant. So normally, if you wanted your button to sort of look filled in, and for those that aren't too familiar with the button component, let me show you, there are three different variants. One is no filled in, aka text, one is with a filled in, and one is with just an outline. You can essentially apply those same stylings to every button in your button group simply by passing that one variant into the button group as a whole. So notice I don't have to pass that variant contained to each one of these individual buttons. I only have to pass it to the top level component. And if you see all this ARIA labels, don't worry too much. That's more for accessibility. Um, it doesn't have anything to do specifically with the MUI uh, component itself. And if you want to learn what these does, there are other sites outside of Material UI that you can learn those from. Now, you can also see that they have examples with the other two variants. The first one is going to be outlined, and then the next one is going to be text. The cool thing about the text is that they actually add a little border between the actual buttons just to make it a bit more obvious that there are three separate buttons here. And of course, you can have as many buttons as you want in a button group. You just have to nest however many you have. The next thing you can do is control the size and colors props. Now note that all of these props we've already covered are the exact same as the, as the ones that you could um, modify in the actual button component. However, by passing these props in to uh, the button group component, it's automatically passing them down. So in the first example, they set the size to small, so all the buttons are sort of smaller. In the second component, they modified the color to be the secondary color. And this color, as I've mentioned in previous videos, will always just come from the MUI theme. Um, by default, every component has a theme, and the primary color is sort of this blue, and that's the default for all the components. And if you pass in color secondary, it will use the secondary color, which by default is sort of this pinkish purple. The next thing I do is they just have an example where they set the uh, size to large. And you can see here that all the buttons are just simply bigger. The other cool thing that you can do that you don't have access to with just the regular button component is to align your buttons in sort of a vertical manner. This could be a cool use case depending on the application you have. Note that you won't use something like this for a drawer, even though it might look like sort of a drawer menu. This is more for specific use cases and if you wanted to do something like a drawer with a list like you see on the documentation there are actual components like the drawer component and the list and list item components that you would use instead this is more for just sort of cool use cases and to do this you just pass in the variant um, orientation equals vertical Next, they have an example of a split button. This one's a bit more advanced, but essentially all they do is they create the regular button group, then they have one normal button, and for the next button, they just pass in sizes small, and of course, like any other button, you can go ahead and pass in an icon. In this case, they've passed in an arrow drop-down icon, and to actually make it have this little menu, they use something called the popper component with the um, menu list component. So if you're interested in that, I'm also going to have videos on how to use menu, menu list, and popper. But just for this example, if you wanted to do exactly what they've done, you can copy that code. But this example and this video is specifically for the button group component. And if you want to make your button groups look like this, you just have a button group with two buttons and one of them would be small. And maybe you would pass in an icon to automatically make it a bit less. The last prop is just this disable elevation prop, which you can also find on the button, which just disables some of the CSS of the actual button itself to make it look less elevated. And that's pretty much it for this very basic component. Like I said, a lot of these concepts are probably just going to come from the actual button itself. So make sure you check out that video. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps a lot with the algorithm. And hit that bell notification and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.